In the vibrant landscape of gaming, achievements serve as milestones marking the player's journey, offering both satisfaction and tangible rewards. They're the unsung heroes of player retention, providing goals that keep the experience fresh and engaging, but how do developers weave these into their games effectively? Games like Hearthstone have set the bar high with their quest system, where achievements aren't just one-off, they're a continuous call to action with daily and weekly challenges. Creating such a system, however, can seem like a quest in itself. Enter Hero's Achievement System, a powerful feature of our Hero Game Development Kit, designed to make implementing a robust achievement system as intuitive as possible. In this video, I'll guide you through configuring the achievement system to track and reward player progress with both one-time and recurring achievements. I'll then show you how to list and display those achievements seamlessly in your game's UI, ensuring players can view their progress as well as how they can contribute towards completing those challenges and claim their well-earned rewards. With that said, let's jump right in and unlock the full potential of player achievements. We'll start by taking a look at our server runtime code. In our previous two Reconstructing Fun videos, I showed you how to initialize and configure Hero as well as set up the various systems. The system that we're interested in here is the Achievement System, and you can see that we're configuring this here with our base achievements.json file, and we're also specifying true to register the RPCs. Let's jump over to the Achievements Configuration file. Inside this file, you can see that we have an Achievements object, and inside it we define the various achievements available within our game. The first achievement here is the first victory achievement. The configuration for this is a name, a description, and a category that allows us to define which group of achievements this belongs to. In this instance, I've defined a category called Once for any achievement that the player can complete a single time. Next, we have a count property, which defines the initial contribution towards the completion of that achievement for the player. Next, we have the max count property. This is the number of times the achievement can be progressed before it's considered complete. After this, we have our standard reward block, and this allows us to reward the player when they complete the achievement. In this instance, we're rewarding the player with a thousand coins. And finally, for this achievement, we have some additional properties. Here I've defined a property called icon name with a value of wins, and I'll use this to determine what icon to display in the user interface. Next, we have an achievement for linking your Apple ID to your account. This is a one-time achievement. It has a max count of one, and it rewards a special card item back. It also has some additional properties here to define the icon name. Below this, we have a daily achievement. I've specified this to be part of the daily achievement category, and I've also specified a cron expression, which resets at midnight every day. This means once the user has completed the achievement, at midnight it will be reset and the user will be eligible to complete it again. We've defined a few more daily achievements here, such as dealing 10 damage, playing a single game, and spending 100 mana. After that, we have a weekly achievement, play five games. Similar to the daily achievement, we've defined a reset cron expression here, and this is configured to reset at the start of each week. Here we're rewarding the player with 10 gems, and also have defined the icon name and the additional properties. Let's jump over to the Nakama console now to take a look at the available RPCs. If we look at the API Explorer, you can see that there are three RPCs available, Achievements Claim, Get, and Update. Claim allows the user to claim their reward once the achievement is complete. Get will receive a list of all achievements available to the player, and Update will allow the user to submit progression towards a number of achievements. And that's everything we need from the server side to configure our achievements, so let's dive over to the client side code now. In our previous Reconstructing Fun videos, I went over the concept of a Hero Coordinator. If you'd like more information about how the Hero Coordinator works and how you can implement your own, I highly recommend going back and watching one of the first two episodes where I cover it in more detail. The key call out here is that once the systems have been initialized within Hero, we find our Quests Manager class and we initialize it. Taking a look at our Quest Manager class now, you can see that we serialize a number of fields here for the various user interface components, we have a reference to an economy and achievement system, and we've defined some constant string variables here that map to the achievement IDs that we defined in our server code. Inside our init async function, we get a reference to the economy system by using the get system extension method on mono behavior, which Hero provides, and then we create a system observer to observe any changes to the economy system. We'll use this for updating the user interface when the user's coins or gems update. 
Next, we get a reference to the achievement system, and again we create a system observer to notify us whenever the achievements have been updated. After that, we'll use task.whenAll to wait for both the economy and the achievement system to refresh their data for the first time. Inside our observer function for the economy system update, we're simply getting the user's coins and gems and updating the various labels within the user interface. Inside our achievements observer function, we're populating the quest grid in the user interface. We're using two functions from the achievement system here, get available achievements, which gets any available achievement for the user inside a particular category, and get available repeat achievements. Again, this gets all available achievements that have a recurring schedule, such as our daily and our weekly achievements. For each of those, we're passing the results to a function called update quest grid. This will go through and update the user interface to display the various achievements in our game. Inside the update quest grid function, we're clearing any existing quest items from the user interface. We're then iterating through each of the achievements that have been passed to this function, and we're defining a few variables here. We have a claimed bool, which determines whether or not the achievement has been claimed, and we do this by checking the claim time sec value within the achievement itself. If it's greater than zero, then we know that the achievement has already been claimed by the user. Next, we define a default string value for the icon name that we're going to use, and then we check to see if there is a property inside of additional properties called icon name. If there is, we'll use that instead. Then we'll instantiate a quest item prefab, which is a user interface component that I've created, and we'll initialize it by passing in some information about the achievement, such as its description, the current contribution count, its max count, icon name, whether or not it's a repeating achievement, and also whether or not it's already been claimed by the user. I then set up an event handler on this particular UI prefab called claim clicked. If it's clicked, then what we'll do is we'll go to the achievement system and we'll call the claim achievements async function, passing in the ID for the achievement. Then we'll refresh the economy system to make sure we have the latest information for our coins and gems, and then we'll show the reward panel, passing in the achievements update acknowledgement variable, which we received from the claim achievements async function. This acknowledgement contains all of the information about the achievements that have been claimed, as well as what their rewards were that the player received. If we scroll down to the show claim reward panel now, you can see that we define an inline function, which takes an achievement as its argument. And inside of this, we're iterating through all of the reward items, the reward energy modifiers, as well as the reward currencies. And for each of those, we're going to create a reward item UI prefab, instantiate it, and initialize it with the various information about that particular reward. With our inline function defined, we're going to clear out the existing reward items from the user interface, then we're going to iterate through each of the achievements within our acknowledgement and add them to the reward panel. We'll do this for both the standard achievements as well as our repeating achievements. Then we'll set the reward panel's game object to be active. And finally, we have a number of functions here to simulate various actions within the game. For example, we have a function to simulate when a game has been played, when the user has dealt damage, when the user has linked their Apple ID to their account, when the user has logged in, and when the user has spent mana. For each of these functions, we're simply passing in an array of achievement IDs to the achievement system's update achievements async function. This function takes both an array of achievement IDs, as well as a number defining how much we want to progress that particular achievement. For example, in the simulate game played function, we're updating the amount by one to indicate that they've played a single game. In the simulate damage function, we're updating the amount by five to indicate that they've dealt five damage and so on. Let's now go and see what this looks like in practice. You can see here in our user interface that we have a list of all of our quests available to the current user. We have our one-time quests, daily, as well as weekly quests. And each of these has a zero contribution count right now. You can also see that our user currently has zero coins and zero gems. Let's start by contributing towards the link Apple ID to your account achievement. We'll do this by pressing the simulate link iOS button. Of course, in your game, you would call this function whenever the user actually links their Apple ID to their account. Once we press this button, you'll see that this achievement becomes available to claim. The user interface updated automatically because we were using the observer pattern on the achievement system to monitor for when any of the achievements are updated. If we press claim, 
you'll see that the reward panel pops up and shows us that we've received a wildcard item. Let's now scroll down to the daily achievements category. And here, let's simulate that the user has played a single game. We'll do this by pressing the simulate play button in this example. And now you can see that this achievement is also available to be claimed. Let's claim this, and you can see that the user has received one gem. If I press OK, you'll see that the interface has also updated to see that the user now has a gem in their wallet. Let's go down to the weekly challenge now, and you can see here that we have an achievement called Spend 500 Mana. Let's simulate the player spending some mana here, and if we press it, you'll see that this updated to show that the user has now spent 100 mana contributing towards this achievement. You might have also noticed that the daily achievement Spend 100 Mana is now available to claim. If I come back down to the weekly achievement here and simulate this a few more times, you'll see that we're now able to claim our weekly achievement. Let's claim this. We'll receive 100 coins and 50 gems. And again, our user interface updates to show that the user has now received those rewards. Let's head back over to the Nakama console and see what this looks like inside the storage engine. For the user that we're logged in as, you can see their current storage objects listed here. You'll see that they have an inventory items storage object as well as an achievements progression object. Let's go into the achievements one now and take a look at the JSON structure in the tree view. Here you'll see that for the Apple link achievement, their count is one, they received a reward with the special card back and the grant time has been populated. You'll also see the time that the user claimed the reward. If we scroll down, you'll see the same for the play one game that they have a count of one, it has a grant time, it shows what reward they received, and again, you can see that they claimed it. Coming down to one of the achievements that we didn't claim, you can see that for spend 100 mana, the user has a count of one, but the reward object is null, as well as the claim time seconds being zero. This indicates that the user has completed the achievement, but they haven't claimed their reward yet. Hopefully this demonstrates how simple it is to add an extremely powerful and flexible achievement system to your game. The achievement system within Hero provides a ton more features, such as the ability to have sub-achievements, as well as achievements that have various preconditions that must be met before they can be progressed. To find out more, head on over to our documentation at heroiclabs.com forward slash docs forward slash hero. Our Hero Game Development Kit makes implementing complex meta gameplay systems, such as the one you've seen here, extremely quick and easy, with our configuration-driven and composable meta systems such as inventory, economy, energies, progression and more. We empower developers to add engaging gameplay features at breakneck speed, cutting development times by as much as 12 months. If you'd like to learn more about how Hero can help power your next game, head on over to heroiclabs.com slash hero where you'll find all the information you need to get started. If you have any questions, please reach out to us on our community forums at forum.heroiclabs.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.